Hello everyone and welcome to my bar. My name is Ansel Birch, the Indecisionist, and I will be your dungeon barkeep today. Now, I am no expert mixologist, but like anyone tending bar in a cave, I have an adventurous spirit and a willingness to try anything once. I don't have a cocktail list or a menu for you to choose from, but I do have a set of gaming dice, and if you're willing, I'll roll up a cocktail using the power of fate, and we'll see how it turns out. Tell you what, I will taste it first, and I'll let you know how it goes. What do you say? Sound like a plan? Cool. Well, let's go ahead and get started. I do have this set of gaming dice on hand, so let's go ahead and roll our first die to choose a essential mixer. You know, there are some mixers that just need to be in any good cocktail, and I've got that list here, so three is vermouth, so we're going to be working with vermouth today. Uh, next up, I've got to pick a garnish, right? We've got to have garnish on a cocktail. This is a bar, after all. i got to, got a presentation is everything. Three, olives! I do love olives. Um, but, I mean, we've picked an essential mixer, but there are all of these other mixers that... I think belong in a cocktail as well. So let's do a, let's do some cola. Vermouth and cola. That's natural. That's a thing people do, right? Yeah, don't contradict me. Uh, what kind of liquor though do you put in vermouth and cola? What could possibly work with this mixture? Uh, let's see, we've got a D10 here. I rolled a one, so it's gonna be flavored. Um, let's see, what flavored, uh, booze do I have? I have Earl Grey gin, I have apple whiskey, and I have peanut butter whiskey. And then I also have coconut rum. Let's see, what is going to go with what we already picked out? Um, the vermouth that we already have in there makes me think that Earl Grey gin is the way to go. So we're going to do Earl Grey gin for today's cocktail. And the folks who are watching this stream live on taping day uh, agree that uh, it's time for a martini or some Earl Grey. I think that this is the way to go. So that's what it is. But just to prove to you that I might have a chance of making something tasty out of this, let's go ahead and look at our bar term chart. And uh, we'll do a little pop quiz. A little pop quiz just to prove that I, I know my stuff and I can explain it to you. Five on that is dry, which is very appropriate considering we're making basically a bad idea martini. Um, dry is uh, in, in alcohol uh, drinks and specifically with martinis like what we're about to do. Uh, generally a indication that it is going to be less sweet. Um, and so frequently the sweetening agent in a martini is vermouth. So famously, a dry martini is going to have a lot less vermouth in it. Um, that does apply in different ways to other drinks. You can get a drier wine, which means it's going to be less sweet, more... Um, uh, bitter is the wrong word, but... Um, savory almost I guess is the is the way to go with that um yeah it's it's a, a whole different beast um but it's definitely it's it, it is a lack of sweetness that makes that that wine or the cocktail dry uh, and today since we are working with effectively a martini all I'm gonna do is dial back our vermouth uh, I'm not going to go so far as uh, as to do the joke recipe where I'm going to show an unopened bottle of uh, vermouth to my martini, but uh, we, we may go uh, a, sh a few shades up from there. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and finally choose a name for what is turning out to be basically a martini. 14. Sanguinria. <laughs> All right. I like the play on sangria and blood. Sanguinria. I like it. That's good. That's good. I don't remember who suggested that one, but props to them. Uh, All right. Let's, uh, let's go ahead over to the bar top cam and put this together. So we're going to start with our mixing tin, and we need to get into that 
two ounces of gin. Now this gin has been infused with Earl Grey tea. I'm a big, big fan of Earl Grey tea in general. And this was a lovely excuse to turn some lackluster gin into some really exciting gin. Uh, so if you have the opportunity to just pour a bunch of tea into gin and wait, uh, I highly recommend it. Like I said, we're just going to do a whisper of vermouth. So yeah, quarter ounce. We're going to do this a little bit dirty today because I like a little bit of uh, dirtiness in my martinis. And I think it's going to offset the uh, the cola a little bit. So we're just going to do a nice hefty pour of olive brine. And while I have it in my hand, I will pick myself a few olives out of here. There we go. And we'll set that aside for now. The last ingredient to go in here is cola, which is famously not a good thing to shake, as I learned in the very first Dungeon Barkeep. So uh, all that's left is to add ice, shake, and then we'll top that with cola. And now we'll pour the small tin over the large tin. It's nice and cool. You can see the the chill on the outside of the shaker. This ice breaks up pretty quickly, so I have uh, absolutely pulverized my ice. So already you can see the effects of that Earl Grey gin. Uh, it's so much darker. Um, it's got that beautiful, like, <clears throat> it's got that beautiful khaki tan color to it um, that comes from the Earl Grey infusion. And now to ruin a perfectly good cocktail, we salute you. Roughly three ounces of cola garnished with olive. There we have it, the Sanguinria. So how does it taste? Wow. You can really tell that there would have been a good cocktail here if I hadn't put Coke in it. Yeah, that Coke just obliterates everything. The the sweetness of the Coke, the cokiness of it, you know, that, that Coca-Cola flavor. It's so aggressive. Um, it sort of knocks everything into this, like, flat, Coke haze. Um, yeah, just not good. Just not good. But there is this, like, back note of the, the tea gin. So the infusing gin with Earl Grey really brings out the bergamot of it. Uh, and so it's that bergamot note that really persists. Um in the like back of this cocktail. It's only when it really like hits the back of your tongue that you're able to discern it or that I'm able to discern it. Um, yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, if you like an Earl Grey martini, uh, just drink an Earl Grey martini. Just, you know, uh, Earl Grey gin, bit of vermouth, a um, couple olives, maybe some juice if you're like me. Um, but yeah, the, the Coke doesn't do any favors to this drink. It's, um, it's not bad. It doesn't make me like want to throw up or, or, or like, it's not like regrettable. It's just not good. It's just, um, yeah. And I, I want to fix it. I want to fix it somehow. But Coke is just such a force. There's a sentence for the world. Yeah, cola and olive. I've I've had that combination a few times here on the show, and it's not it's not a winning combination. But what kind of adventure does this go into? What kind of adventure would you force this onto your uh, heroes with? And I've I've sometimes gone into um, into a, a storytelling place when you're working with a gross cocktail or a cocktail that's not good. That it it must be a qualified bartender trying to tell you something is wrong, right? So like the bartender has made a conscious decision to put things together that don't belong in in hopes to uh, alert our adventurers to something being up or to serve as a secret code um i still need to write that adventure with the cocktail code um but this one doesn't feel like an experienced bartender made it it feels like a bar back who watched somebody make something and then added something that didn't belong so maybe the twist for this one is that it's yeah Juliet Hart not like a hidden message shrink in this one I feel like the twist is that this is how you out the person who isn't a bartender right so you're at the pub your party has uh, gone here to track down uh, you know uh, henchman number six and uh, henchman number six has uh, eluded them and gone into hiding and they're looking around the bar and they're trying to figure out who who henchman number six has disguised themselves as um and henchman number six is a uh highly motivated qualified person uh of of skill uh and so they're you know they're doing a good job pretending to be a uh a, a bartender or a cocktail mancer um except that they observed this one cocktail being made incorrectly. Uh, and so they put this one piece of ingredient into, um, into there that doesn't belong. I feel like that's, that's the best way to put something like this into an adventure. That way you get that opportunity to, um, you know, the, the cocktail is still there. It's still exactly as it is. It's, it's clear that Sanguinria was supposed to be a play on Sangria. So like, clearly they not only got the wrong drink but they made the wrong drink wrong right this is clearly an earl gray martini or whatever an earl gray martini is in your world it's a green fruit martini um but um you know somebody ordered a sanguinria they got the earl gray martini and the martinis weren't made wrong so uh it's two things that are wrong that sort of tip off that the person behind the bar is new at the very least and that could lead our adventurers towards thinking oh well new huh are you new as in you just showed up five minutes before we did and stole somebody's apron or are you just like a new person who works here and that's a fun layer as well like if you're if you're questioning everybody at the tavern do you question the bar back or the you know the new bartender or whatever so yeah i think that's the adventure hook that goes with the Sanguinria. The Sanguinria is a plot device and not a cocktail. Do I advise it? Absolutely not. Uh, but I do hope that it's entertaining. I hope you are entertained. Uh, and if you were, like, comment, subscribe, all the things YouTubers tell you to do. And until next time, 
drink adventurously. It's just not good. 